recycling has been almost as important a theme in permaculture activism and projects as gardening. We are flooded with an amazing array of materials and stuff in affluent societies that we are failing to make use of. The idea that recycling is about taking a glass bottle and smashing it and melting it down to make another glass bottle is an extremely primitive idea. We're really short, not of the materials, but short of the skills to make use of them all. Um, a drum that's been turned into a hand basin cabinet. Uh, something a little bit more upmarket, new fashion clothes that have been made from recycled uh, fabrics. Another theme in permaculture activism has been community gardens and city farm projects and also uh, what we can call urban agriculture. As opposed to what I call garden agriculture, which is home-based food production that's not in the monetary economy, urban agriculture where we're talking about commercial production such as Fairview Gardens in Santa Barbara, uh, not a project that's specifically branded as permaculture, but very much reflects permaculture uh, principles. 12 acres of intensive mixed polyculture of annual crops and tree crops, uh, worked by 60 people, uh, providing food for the immediate local community, totally surrounded by suburban houses. The Ceres City Farm in Brunswick in Melbourne, uh, it's pretty much one of the flagship projects of the City Farms and Community Gardens movement in Australia. They just held their conference in, in Melbourne. There's over 100 of these projects in Melbourne metropolitan area. A newer project um, in Brisbane, the Northy Street uh, City Farm. It's interesting that uh, What's happened over the last 20 years or so, there's been an acknowledgement of these sort of projects as being beneficial in terms of community building and environmental education. But no recognition that food security should actually be a central issue in urban sustainability. You'll generally find that most urban sustainability strategies don't mention food. They're all focused on transport, uh, water, uh, native biodiversity, um, building um, insulation, all of these subjects but food, that's not part of it. Well, we've had a major breakthrough in South Australia. There's now a two-line mention of food in the Adelaide um, sustainability strategy. So this issue of food and how it's a part of urban design is uh, one of the central themes of the, the second part of this presentation. New ways of trading and finance where we reorganise our economies, uh, not so much by trying to reform the large scale systems, but developing new ways of, of trading. Woofing, uh, people might not think of it as a, a money system, it's not, it's actually an exchange of work, an exchange for food and accommodation. Uh, and of course the learning experience that comes from that. This has also been a major way that permaculture ideas have filtered around the world, sort of like a, um, carrier pigeons taking ideas from one place to another, uh, a sort of a, like an underground internet, if you like. At the moment, all, of course, dependent on uh, cheap airfares. <laughs> uh, let's. Uh, another idea that didn't start with uh, the permaculture movement came out of British Columbia but has been adopted and taught in permaculture design courses as an example of local currencies that can allow value to recirculate within communities. Ethical investment. Until 1982 in Australia, all ethical investment was about not investing in cigarette companies and the arms trade. Uh, following the development of a group called August Investments, started by permaculture activists that led to um, Australian Ethical Investment and Superannuation, which is the biggest uh, fund in the, uh, the country, 
uh, ethical investment became about creating the world we do want by positively investing in things that meet the criteria. Community supported agriculture that involves this connection between consumers and producers. Again, this uh, didn't start in Australia and didn't start with the permaculture movement. We got it from the west coast of America, but it doesn't come from there. It really comes from Japan, where it's called Teike. In Japan, five and a half million households get their food directly from farmers. That's households, not people. Um, that's a, an enormous uh, positive solution. It's probably one of Japan's most important modern design ideas for uh, this new world that we're entering. New ways of sharing land through co-housing projects and eco-villages. Uh, there's a local one, Earthsong Co-Housing Community in Auckland. Uh, Earth Haven in, in North Carolina. These larger scale residential projects are allowing, allowing us to bring together a lot of these different permaculture solutions in an integrated design. And especially through uh, shared ownership of land and the governance structures that go with that. So how do all of these, um, this diversity of solutions and many others fit together. They all reflect the ethics and design principles of permaculture, which we apply in seven domains of permaculture action. The first is land and nature stewardship. This is the, also the living source from where we get the design principles in the first place, because it's the working relationship with nature through gardening, agriculture, forestry, aquaculture, etc. that um, uh, where the design principles come from. And then we apply those same principles to the design and use of the built environment, to our use and development of craft, tools, and technology. Many people would recognize these three domains as the spectrum of permaculture solutions. But there's another four which are essential to uh, an ecologically balanced and socially just society. We need to reform and rebuild our uh, education and our culture. Again, from the bottom up, not just reform university education, though that is desperately needed. My little icon there reflects the participatory uh, music and arts movement, where we again become participants in our culture rather than passive consumers of what's provided by professionals. Health and spiritual well-being. It's surprising the number of people that come to an interest in permaculture through having been involved in uh, alternative and complementary medicine, uh, things like yoga, and many other aspects that reflect uh, both a holistic approach and a self-reliance approach. Movements like Dying with Dignity and most fundamentally the home birth movement reflect permaculture principles. I've mentioned the need to redesign our systems of finance and economics from the bottom up. And lastly, our systems of land tenure and community governance. Again, by working from the bottom up um, in small scale examples. And this last one links back most fundamentally to land and nature stewardship. How we actually control those resources and share access to them. 